Okay, so uh, this is a slightly different video today. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what it's like living with Meniere's disease and tinnitus. And also why I do kind of what I do um, with regards to like the YouTube channel, my blog, side hustles and so on and so forth. So it's about maybe 15 years ago, something like that. I was playing pool. We used to have a, we used to live in a townhouse. I used to rent with some friends, and I was playing pool, and I'll never forget it. It was, it was a morning, and we were playing pool, and everything was, you know, absolutely fine one minute, and then literally the next minute, I literally couldn't see like all the balls. All the balls were just going like this, and um, it was really, really all, like horrible vertigo. The whole room was spinning. Um, and yeah, it was a nightmare and I had to go and kind of just lay down. So, and I, and I sort of probably got up that day and probably didn't think much of it. And then, you know, we just sort of carried on, just sort of carried on about myself. And then it probably happened again, maybe like three months later or something. Um, probably a different setting. But again, I had this vertigo and this spinning. So then I, I, um, again, it, it, it slowly but surely they started getting more kind of frequent. So ended up going to see the doctor. They kind of went through the whole kind of rigmarole of trying to find out what it was. Take loads of tablets for this, that and the other. Some doctors just said, oh no, you know, it might just be a one-off thing. Eventually I got to see an ENT who diagnosed it as Meniere's. Now this is a condition which affects the sort of inner ear and it leads to vertigo and balance problems. So I had this um, quite bad for maybe, I don't know, maybe sort of, I'll say eight, nine years, maybe something like that, where I was getting fairly frequent attacks. I used to have to take uh, tablets three times a day. I had a few operations on my right ear. My, this, I've got it on my right side. So I had um, a few things like grommets inserted to try and relieve pressure, and they were trying all sorts of stuff. There is no cure, unfortunately. Um, it's just one of those things that we've got to, you know, learn to live with, which if anyone suffers from the condition, um, then you'd have been told that before, um, which doesn't help one bit, does it? But, um, so as things kind of went on, the, the it, you know, it starts to affect your lifestyle a bit. So things like, you know, you have to cancel appointments for stuff. You find yourself, you have to let people down. Yeah, I have to, I've lost friends over this. I've let people down over this. I've had to cancel appointments, arrangements, get togethers, things like this. Um, because you just don't know when these sort of attacks, if you like, are going to happen. So you get kind of all that. And then there is a bit of a fear of, you know, is this thing going to sort of materialise into something that is a almost like a permanent disability. Well, I've got it on one side, um, in you know, 10, 15% of cases, it does actually happen on both. Um, so this side's now pretty much shot to bits. I've got maybe 20% here and left in this side. And unfortunately, one of the sort of, one of the kind of permanent, per permanent symptoms that you're left with is tinnitus, which is like, um, it could be in various different forms, but I've got like a high pitch ringing. Because every time you have one of these attacks, vertigo attacks, it actually damages your ear permanently. So I've got now permanent tinnitus 24 seven in this side. And fairly frequently, not, not permanent, but maybe 50% of the time in this side as well. And that can be a real drain. I mean, I have been in some quite sort of dark places because of that. Um, that really does get you down. That is a hard thing to live with. Um, anyone that suffers from that, I totally sympathise. Um, there's loads of support groups out there and stuff, but that's literally all you can do. It's one of those invisible illnesses, which is, I don't think there's enough being done about it. I know I'm sure there is in the background, but for me, when I tried to get help about it, it's, there's a lot of sort of therapies, um, there's a lot of lifestyle changes, but nothing really, it doesn't help. You know, so for me, I was, I was trying to explain, explain to a colleague of mine the other day that 
sometimes it's all about just getting through the day. You can't look five years ahead. You can't look 10 years ahead. You've got to look literally making it to the end of the day. Um, Because it's really hard to sort of concentrate. It's really hard to talk to people. It's really hard now to just watch videos or, you know, watch TV or read a book. Stuff that used to be kind of easy and simple and, you know, you take a lot of pleasure out of can now actually become quite hard. Um, which a lot of people don't really know about. They don't, you know, it's not sort of portrayed enough. So there's that side of it. Um, and then you've got like your work. So you can be in a position where, you know, if you're not, you you might have to take days off um, because of, you know, you, you get really bad disruptive sleeps. Um, you're tired, like literally all the time. Um, so again, if anyone sort of relates to this, then, feel free to drop a comment in or reach out below. But I'm just trying to kind of share my story um, and sort of my experience of living with it. So that kind of moves on to sort of what, why I do these, this channel, why I do the Instagram, why I do the blog, why I sell things online and why I try and, you know, I'll do eBay stuff and, you know, various bits and pieces. And that is because that I don't know how long I'm going to have to live with this in its current current um in its sort of in its current sort of position which is it's manageable at the moment you know I'm, I'm okay touch wood you know things are, are manageable in in terms of you know vertigo and stuff like that i don't get as many as i used to but you know i've still got this 24 7 tinnitus which you know i know that's with me forever now you know there are, you know, there, there is no cure for that. And as far as I know, anyway, I mean, there's always the sort of, you know, you go down the road of sort of the snake oil salesman and, you know, all these, there, there are a lot of, I don't want to say scams, but, you know, you got to be a bit careful what we're out there with, when you go hunting for, hunting for solutions to medical problems anyway. Um, yourself but but you know i want to give people a sense of hope if you like um i wanted to make this video so that people can reach out to me if they were experiencing similar problems or if they've got similar if you can relate to anything i've said um so i'm trying quite a few things now uh, number one is really really trying to stay positive with things um it's really difficult if you get into like a negative spin, I think, when you get into like, and it is, I completely understand it. Like I said, throughout this video, I, I've been in some very, very dark places with it. Um, and I'm not ashamed to admit that, but I hope that, you know, you, we can, I hope that people can see that, you know, there is a sort of hope and a, and a, and a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to use that term, but. Uh, you know, I, I've got a young family now and, you know, I've got to think of them. So this, this kind of, is kind of why I do these ventures as well as obviously helping people out, which I love doing, um, is to show people that, you know, there are alternatives out there and there are opportunities um, to perhaps ease some of the pressures um, that go with daily life anyway. You know, we've all got mortgages and bills to pay and you've got to put food on the table and you know, the current state of the world, everything gets more expensive. So that's kind of why I try and help people out. And obviously for myself as well, but obviously I can, if I can help some others out on, on as well, then that's great. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video really just to kind of get a few things off my chest. I've been thinking about doing it for a while, but that's a kind of backstory into what it's like living with kind of menieres and tinnitus. Uh, I've got hearing aid now, only, I only wear it on this side. Which has got like masking sounds and things like that, which helps a little bit. But so that's kind of it, really. Um, mine's a high pitch. The tinnitus I have is a high pitch, so I'll try and play something in this clip, um, and then it kind of gives you an idea as to what our mine's ten, ten kilohertz sine wave. I think it is.
But, um, yeah, so I hope that's helped a few people out. Reach out, as always, I'll put my Instagram channel down below. And um, thanks very much for watching. Thank you.